Imagine a world where the most powerful country on earth in 2021 wasn't the United States, but rather Spain. And instead of setting up military bases just in their own country, they also set up bases all around the world. Lots of those bases are in former colonies, but also there's a bunch in the United States. Just imagine this. You zoom into Fayetteville, North Carolina, and you see a huge military base. But it's not a US military base, it's a Spanish base on American soil, with lots of homes for the Spanish soldiers and their families, powerful weapon systems, aircraft, all run by the Spanish military. Go inside of one of these bases and it's all Spanish restaurants. Americans can't come in here unless they work for the Spanish government. And then imagine a hundred more of these, all throughout the United States on American soil, and hundreds of more throughout the world. Or shift the scenario a little bit. What if it was a country that wasn't our ally? A country like China. What if they had military bases, not in the US, but right up close to our border? Powerful weapon systems right off our shores in islands in the Caribbean. If you're an American, you have to imagine what that would feel like. If you're not an American, it's likely you already kind of know what this feels like. The United States has an extensive network of military bases outside of our borders. Hundreds of bases. I've been fascinated for a very long time about understanding these US foreign bases abroad, but I've never actually taken the time to accurately map them. So let's do it. Let's map every single US military base around the world. It turns out that's a huge task. This is the story of the men of the United States Army who made this project possible and of man's never ceasing quest for knowledge. This is a full armored division. To give you an idea of size, each of those small dark squares includes more than a thousand men. The United States military is bigger than any of us can really fathom. It's so big that even the US military doesn't know how big the US military is. Back in 2018, 1,200 independent accountants and analysts came in to try to audit the US Department of Defense. To basically try to get like a paper trail of how big this thing is, how much money it spends, etc. And the Department of Defense didn't pass the audit. Like they, they literally did not have the documents or the knowledge to really piece together a full scope of what this organization is, how big it is, how much money it spends. So we don't know. Nobody knows how big the Pentagon is in all of its forms. All we do know is that objectively, it is one of the, if not the largest and most powerful organization on the planet and in the history of humanity. I mean, if you have a organization that's more powerful than, than the Department of Defense, uh, in the history of humans, like, let me know. I want to know about it. But as far as I can tell, there's nothing bigger and more powerful than the United States military in 2021. And much of the U.S. military is not actually in the U.S., but is actually outside of our borders, all around the world. This post is somewhere in Germany, overlooking a sector of the Iron Curtain. One of the first things that Joe Biden and his administration did when they came into power a couple of weeks ago down the road was ask for an assessment of how big is our military presence around the whole world? What is our strategy? And what actually does this presence look like? Uh, the department will conduct a global force posture review of U.S. military footprint, resources, and strategies. Footprint. I like that. That's like a nice thing. Like, what's our footprint? How big is our footprint? around the world, we don't really know, the Pentagon is going to start to try to assess that. So let's help the Pentagon out and try to map every single United States base around the entire world. Let's do it. It wasn't too long ago when I used to think that having military bases in other countries was totally normal. Like, doesn't every country have like military bases in, in other countries? Yeah, anyway. This was sort of reinforced for me when I was in college. I did an internship at NATO with the headquarters of NATO, which was in Brussels. To get this job, I had to get a secret security clearance from the US government in order to enter the military base, which was NATO. This was really cool because 
there was always like people coming through NATO that I got to meet, like my diplomacy hero, Madeleine Albright, who used to be the Secretary of State, or this guy. It's a great honor representing my country abroad uh, for the last uh, 37 years. Good old Joe. Hey, Joe. Had no idea you'd be president someday. Anyway, the big benefit of having this secret security clearance is that I could go into any military base anywhere. And so on Saturdays, I would drive an hour from Brussels to a little village in the Belgian countryside where a military base had been sort of plopped down in the middle of the Belgian countryside in between like stone walls and quaint streets and sheep and farming plots. Yeah, it's a little blurry in this map because it's, you know, a military base and sometimes they blur the satellite imagery. Nothing I can do about it, sorry. And as soon as I entered into the base, went through all the security and I was in the base, I felt like I had left Belgium and was suddenly entering suburban America. Welcome to the United States. There was a Taco Bell and movie theaters with American movies and all sorts of shops and like yoga studios and like a, a, a grocery store that had all of the products that I was very used to, all at the same price as I could get them in the United States, even though they had been flown across the Atlantic and brought to this place, which is a very expensive thing to do. It was a dream for me as a poor college kid living in Brussels and feeling a little bit homesick, to be honest. I hadn't really figured out culture shock at this point. So yeah, I kind of loved it. And I was again, sort of like, doesn't everyone have military bases in other countries and they can sort of just go to their military base? And it was just, I was so naive. Hmm. Alas, I've learned the truth. Luckily, I was able to talk to somebody who literally wrote the book on U.S. military bases abroad. Most U.S. bases abroad look like not so small U.S. towns. Over the years, David has been researching and compiling a database of all the U.S. bases around the world. The result is a very detailed audit that hasn't really ever been done to this degree. In fact, a few years ago, the Pentagon's own research arm, the RAND Corp, was doing some research on military bases abroad. And instead of using the Pentagon's list of US military bases abroad, these guys used David's list. Like they used David, he was like, he's a professor. He's like an anthropologist. He's not like a part of DOD. And yet they're like, this list that he made is actually more authoritative than like the Pentagon's own list. I mean, I'm you know, sort of honored, but it's, it's, it's not a good sign if the, the Pentagon, a Pentagon research arm is using my list and not the Pentagon's own list. So I got a hold of David's list and started wrestling with the data and finding a way to display it on a map so that I could get every single base to show somehow. After a few weeks of doing this, I finally have a map. And that map looks like this. Every dot on this map is a US military base or installation of some sort in a different country. Many of these dots are not placed exactly where the base is because many of these bases are clustered in areas. And if I tried to map them all in the exact spot where they really are, they would all just sort of stack on top of each other and you wouldn't really be able to see them. But these dots represent every single base outside of the United States from huge complexes the size of Rhode Island to small airstrips, little facilities that only house American drones or radar or supplies. This is all of them, and at least all that we know of. And if you look at this map and you see a base that you know of that is not here, or one that is there that doesn't belong there, tell me about it. I want to know because this is sort of hard information to ascertain. The Pentagon is not very transparent and neither are host countries about where certain bases are and why they exist. Many of the bases around the world are, are uh, their existence uh, is due to uh, uh, an agreement between the two countries that is often not open to the public, that is, that is secret. Any errors here are mine and not David's. All in all, the number here is about 750. 750 US military bases, big and small, outside of the United States. By outside of the United States, I'm including US territories that are not equal to the United States, like Guam, Puerto Rico, etc. But in reality, we probably don't know the real number because that data just simply is not transparently available to us. 
There are a couple major clusters here where the most bases exist. One major one is Germany, and the others are Japan and South Korea. These are basically holdovers from World War II and the subsequent Korean War, when the US, who won the war, came in and occupied these countries in order to set up a new government, write a new constitution, and to help the post-war transfer to a new government. But what's most interesting to me aren't these clusters that came about because of World War II, but instead the far-flung, sort of unexpected or little-known places that the US military has a little footprint. Like all the dots in Africa, which have popped up in recent years as the US has expanded its presence there. These are usually small installations that hold maybe a few soldiers or mainly private citizens who are government contractors. And they mainly house things like drones or radar or weapon systems. You also have this cluster of dots deep in the Indian Ocean, which is the island of Diego Garcia, which I've talked about at length, about the US military's role in displacing hundreds of local people to set up a base there. Some of these dots are just airstrips, a runway in the middle of nowhere. And these runways usually belong to the host country and the US just rents them for a period of time. Like this facility in the middle of the desert in Oman. Places like this exist to hold supplies in case a war breaks out. So the US maintains these stockpiles of war supplies all around the globe so that they can strike at any point without having to ramp up a, a, like a war economy at home. It takes away a lot of the friction from going to war. They've made it easier for the US military to launch offensive wars, the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan um, were easier to launch because the US has maintained a huge infrastructure of bases. Some of these dots don't represent a place where US soldiers are actually stationed, but instead it represents where money from the Pentagon has gone to influence or build up infrastructure. For example, in Iceland, the US is spending a lot of money, tens of millions of dollars, to upgrade this airport, the airport that we all go through when we're going to Iceland but doing it for military purposes so that the US can use it, can land there if needed. So next time you land in Iceland on your way to the Blue Lagoon, just know that you're passing by one of these little dots. Over here in the Azores, the, these islands that are owned by Portugal, nearly 2,000 kilometers away from any landmass, there is a group of US military installations mainly used for refueling and weapon storage. Head up here to Greenland and you'll see a little base way up high, the most northern base in the world where 140 Americans live. Kind of looks interesting. I'd love to go there someday. Way out here in the Pacific, you've got loads of remote military bases owned by the United States. They're mainly small airstrips, like this base on the southern tip of this huge atoll of the Marshall Islands. All right, listen, I'm not gonna explain every single base. There are 750, maybe 800, there's a bunch of bases. I just wanted to give you a flavor of what some of these look like. They're diverse, they're all over the place and they're fascinating to me. I have been compiling accounts of people who live next to US military bases. I have over a hundred accounts from people that, from my call out on Instagram, I want more. I wanna make an entire video about life next to a base. And that is why I'm calling upon all of you. I'm gonna put a link in my description to like a survey. It's like a form of like what it's like to live next to a US military base. I have it right here. And I'm gonna be checking it. You can fill out this form, and then I will get your response and I will read through your response and I will use that to construct an understanding of what life is like next to a US military base. I talked to David a bunch about this too. He's done a bunch of research, done a bunch of interviews, and I wanna keep talking about this. So if you don't live next to a military base, I wanna hear from you like, what are your thoughts about this? Whether you're an American or not an American, like, is, does this seem right? Does this seem like the, the right choice, the right thing for our taxpayer money to be going towards? I'm still making up my mind on a lot of this stuff and I want to start a discussion. My goal in this video was to just map it, was to just look at it, be able to see it on a map. And I've finally done that. By the way, there will be a high res version of this map on my Patreon for patrons who sign up for the map background tier that will be there. So I will be in the comments more than normal for this video 
I want to hear from you. Before you go, I want to say thank you to the people who gave me a lot of footage for this piece. I didn't go out into the desert and the ocean to film for this video. I got a lot of it from Storyblocks, who's the sponsor of today's video. Storybox has supported this channel for a long time and I'm very grateful because Storybox is a place where you can get loads of amazing footage. Like this video would be half as visually interesting if I didn't have a lot of this footage. But it's not just stock footage. Storyblox is full of literally over a million assets from sound design assets like sound effects or After Effects templates that you can use to make animations and then loads of beautiful high res 4K footage that you can download, wait for it, unlimited amounts if you're a subscriber. Like you just subscribe, you pay one price a month and you can download as much as you want of this like really good stuff. I've been using Storyblocks as long as I've been making professional video, well before they ever came to sponsor my YouTube channel, well before I had a YouTube channel. I will continue to use them because it makes so much sense. If you're interested in using Storyblocks, there's a link in my description where you can learn how to sign up and get in on this amazing service. Clicking that link helps support this channel, but it also gives you access to this amazing library of assets. Thank you Storybox for supporting this channel and for supporting my work. And thank you all for being here. I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.